Yes, yes. Uh, my first experiment is to uh, uh, observe the transient phenomena of uh, coaxial transmission lines and study the their time uh, domain behavior. So, uh, transmission lines basically uh, a circuit which has two ends. One, uh, the left part is the source and the right part is the load. The load can be any uh, a dummy load such as uh, resistor load, capacitor, or inductor load, or uh, Typically, in uh, practical applications, uh, the load will be antenna. So, uh, and uh, transmission effect. So, uh, this, whenever the voltage is applied uh, from source to the load, uh, the voltage takes some time, some finite time to reach from point A to point B. So, this time is called as transit transit time, and this effect is known as the transit time. Uh, the transit time is given by the formula L by V, where L is the length of the uh, transmission line and V is the speed of the uh, wave. Uh, so uh, this finite uh, delay causes some uh, uh, effects uh, uh, in the transmission in, in the tra during transmission, and then uh, the characteristic impedance. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, overall resistance of the uh, transmission line. So that is. Uh, if we consider transmission lines, uh, which is in the right image, so this can be viewed as a parallel plate capacitor. So two parallel transmission lines constitute a parallel plate ca capacitor. Therefore, uh, there will be a small uh, capacitance value uh, distributed across the transmission line. And if we observe uh, each transmission lines, uh, transmission lines uh, can be viewed as a bunch of uh, coils. So it, it also acts as an uh, inductor. Uh, due to this inductor capacitor pair uh, distributed along the transmission line, uh, so a, a resistance is developed uh, between the transmission lines, which is called as the characteristic impedance. So, characteristic impedance is given by the uh, formula here, uh, where uh, uh, D is the distance between the transmission lines and R is the radius of the cable, coaxial cable used. Uh, so, uh, this this characteristic impedance uh, causes uh, uh, a phenomenon called reflection in transmission lines. So basically, uh, whenever a voltage is applied at the source source end, uh, the the source observes the whole transmission line as a infinite capacity, infinite lo infinite uh, load. Therefore, it assumes uh, it assumes the overall resistance uh, of the transmission line uh, with the with its capacitor with its characteristic impedance. So there are three conditions uh, in the reflections. So uh, one is Z load is greater than Z cable. So whenever uh, the load, the resistance of the load is greater than the characteristic impedance of the cable, I uh, will get a signal reflection. That is, uh, some amount of power is reflected back to the source uh, if uh, Z load is greater than Z cable. And uh, if Z load is lesser than Z cable, uh, there will be a some uh, some amount of reflection, but uh, also uh, the Output uh, voltage will be uh, lesser uh, than the desired output voltage. The ideal condition is the load load resistance must be equal to the characteristic impedance. So this is the condition for maximum uh, power transfer between the source and the load. So we aim to uh, make the load load resistance equal to the load, uh, cap capacity uh, characteristic impedance uh, using various methods. So uh, the this experiment this experiment shows the uh, how voltage travels in the transmission lines and how reflection takes place so for example if my source voltage is 20 volts and the generator uh, resistance that is the source resistance is 100 ohms and i've given the load resistance at, as uh, 200 uh, first i'll give Ohms, that is the, now the load resistance is equal to the characteristic impedance. So as per theory, uh, no reflection should take place. Yes, sir. So uh, if I observe, if you observe, so 20 volts is the source resistance, and uh, initially uh, the volt in, initially the load voltage uh, is approximated. 
6.66 volts because our uh, characteristic impedance and the uh, resist, uh, the source voltage is uh, 50 and 100 so the ratio is 2 by 3 2 by 3 of uh, 20 is 6.66 but then uh, over time uh, the load resistance is also 50 ohms so uh, after uh, the trans transmission line converges so the load the output voltage remains the same that is 6.6 .6 volts therefore we we won't get any deflections in this case but uh, for example if we give 100 ohms now uh, initially uh, the 20 volts must be split in the ratio of 2 is to 3 and then over time uh, as the uh, resistance the load resistance and the generator resistance are equal uh, the voltage should come up to 10 that is 20 divided by 2 uh, so now initially the load voltage is 6.6 .6 here so the initial voltage and reflection is taking place so multiple reflection takes place uh, until uh, the voltage uh, is reached to 10 Yes, sir. So now, now the voltage uh, has reached to 10. So uh, the uh, the second below graph uh, gives the voltage at uh, here. For example, I've given the voltage reading at zero. So it's basically like uh, uh, if we keep a multimeter across the transmission lines at the source, we can also check in the uh, uh, load end part. Uh, in the load end part, initially the voltage will be zero and it raises to 10. 10, 10 volts but in this case the initial voltage is 6.6 .6 and it rises to 10 volts uh, with respect to time so uh, th th this is the first experiment uh, okay. first experiment and the second experiment is the n port scattering parameters so a uh, scattering matrix uh, uh, is a tool uh, to quantize the a ratio of a reflected voltage to the uh, incident voltage. Uh, so, uh, ref, uh, scattering matrix is a square n, n cross n matrix, uh, which, which is the ratio of uh, reflected normalized reflected voltage to the uh, no, normalized incident voltage at any at any given port. So, SIJ corresponds to uh, scattering parameters at ports uh, I and J, uh, which is given by uh, normalized voltage at reflected normalized voltage at port i uh, by uh, incident uh, normalized voltage at port j ulta so, so, vi v i and the incident and v i and the reflected yes reflected yes i is nothing but a port number okay. a port uh, uh, so uh, there are uh, uh, mainly five types of uh, five behaviors of networks uh, first is the match networks uh, where uh, all the port impedances are same. Uh, therefore, if we observe the S parameter matrix, uh, the diagonal elements will be zero. And uh, the reciprocal networks, in the reciprocal networks, uh, uh, any network which consists of uh, purely passive parts, uh, it's called as a reciprocal network. So, uh, for example, in a two port reciprocal network, uh, the voltage. Uh, the voltage at port 1 due to the current at port 2 will be equal to the voltage at uh, port 2 uh, due to the same current at the port 1. So that is a reciprocal network, uh, which, can, which can also mean uh, Sij is equal to Sji, uh, where J and I are not equal. And then the symmetrical networks, uh, if in any port, uh, if the output impedance and the input impedance are same, uh, it's called a sym symmetrical networks. Usually, uh, symmetrical networks have uh, same uh, symmetrical uh, physical networks also. That is, it looks same uh, uh, across the network. And then is the lossless networks. So, uh, as the name suggests, there is no uh, dissipation of any power. Uh, therefore, the sum of in, uh, incident power at all ports uh, is equal to the sum of reflected ports. 
so in the s matrix uh, the at each row the sum of the squares of sum of s matrix will be unity and the lossy networks uh, it's a, a passive network where uh, where losses happen that is uh, it dissipates some some amount of power uh, therefore we get uh, positive or negative uh, s parameters depending on the type of loss uh, and a uh, two port networks so uh, in the s, s parameter matrix uh, we get four different uh, s parameters uh, so two are called reflection coefficients which is s11 and s, s12 here uh, s11 measures uh, the amount of reflection taking place at the input uh, input port and uh, s22 measures how amount of re uh, reflection taking place at the output port and s12 and s21 are called the transition coefficient s21 is nothing but the forward gain and s12 is the reverse gain so for example if we consider uh, amplifier as a two port network uh, our, our uh, s21 parameter must be uh, ideally high uh, because we expect uh, uh, much higher gain in uh, 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 in the transistor and uh, the reverse isolation that is the uh, reverse uh, gain must be ideally zero <clears throat> and three port networks so uh, three port networks uh, can be either matched reciprocal or lossless so depending on the combination uh, uh, we use it for various applications so uh, if uh, the, all the three uh, and a, a three port network cannot be matched reciprocal and lossless so that is physically impossible and uh, these are the some of the combinations uh, so power dividers are uh, uh, dev uh, dev microwave devices which is used to split power among two ports and circulator is uh, uh, circulator rotates the input and the output uh, uh, ports uh, in the in a circle uh, in a clockwise or anti clockwise manner so depending on the application uh, we design the network uh, in a three port network yeah, the same slide. One minute, Abhinandan. Ah, sir. So, this slide only first net that the not possible. Another tick mark there. Ah, it sir, is not um, possible to match, isn't it? So, it is not possible to have a three-port network which is matched, reciprocal, and losses. Losses. So all three is not possible. Okay, and so the isolator. Saw, uh, isolator, that is circulator use made there. But how that will help uh, to be lossless or reciprocal and it is no it will not help for matched network so the yathara help agutha the reciprocal game at the lossless again three port network sir, I didn't, sir for circulator sir, huh, sir uh, the circulator yeah yeah the circulator is basically used to uh, for example if there are three ports one two three uh, mm -hmm. if we get an input at port one uh, circulator switches the output port from 1 to 2 uh, uh, in a circular manner so from uh, the output we'll get at port 2 and if you get an input at port 2 we'll get output at port 3 so uh, we are assuming it's in a circular manner so in this case uh, the network can't be reciprocal because in reciprocal, in reciprocal networks uh, the sij is equal to sji but uh, uh, we need the forward gains uh, in a three port network to be to not be equal to the uh, the uh, reciprocal uh, S parameter. So oh, that I understood. And how this uh, isolator will help you to lossless isolator means the low power divider. Isolator now the class are held in the microwave devices only. Uh, and the waveguide components and the beginning are held in the node. Circular, circulator, isolator, amale, triangular waveguide, rectangular waveguide, magic T, avela held in the so those are all the device or the components which helps to achieve these conditions matched reciprocal and lossless uh, for in this case you are explaining for the three port network and here i would like to know how this isolator or the lossy power divider will help to get a lossless in the three port network uh, so, so isolator is used to uh, isolate a circuit uh, uh, from the source of power that is uh, to avoid damage so uh, we should uh, we need a, a lossless that is the control part and the high high power that is a uh, rf part uh, will be 
uh, isolated using using this isolator so uh, the any loss can be avoided uh, using using this isolator sir uh, i don't know about the how the matched and reciprocal are uh, achieved okay okay go ahead so uh, So, so uh, here uh, in the experiment, I have uh, uh, just given the formulas and how to calculate for all the uh, four, three, one, two, three, and uh, generalized import network. So, report for, network for... in the hack report network in the okay. new health level. So that uh, for isolator or circulator, we need to need, we will see that uh, is it uh, helps to be lossless or to reciprocal or Sir, uh, so. Uh, here uh, they have given how to find out uh, each parameter. Uh, for example, I'll show one uh, S11. So S11 is found by uh, driving port one with incident voltage. And here uh, this is we we basically drive port two and port three uh, to zero and uh, measure the reflected and incident wave at port one. Uh, so that is how we get uh, S11 uh, in theory. And uh, in the example. Uh, so they have given uh, uh, all the combinations that are possible. So uh, if we give all ports matched and reciprocal and lossless, so uh, we get uh, uh, such a device cannot be physically realized. Uh, because uh, uh, if we uh, if we observe all the all the six equations and we and we and if we substitute, uh, uh, we get a contradictory uh, statement. So this proves that uh, all the three combinations is not possible. So uh, here uh, we can, uh, if if only two ports are matched, uh, that is, uh, for example, if one and two are matched, uh, so one and two have the same uh, load uh, load impedance uh, as the at, at its as its corresponding port impedance. So the, th those two are matched, and uh, reciprocal network. So we can observe S one two is equal to uh, S two one uh, because th this, uh, these are uh, reciprocal networks. The all these both are same. And similarly, S13 and S23, uh, S23. As this is also a lossless network, uh, the sum of the squares of sum of each row is 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 one. And uh, this is the uh, property of uh, S matrix. That is the conjugate of S13 uh, multiplied by S23 is zero. That is according to each row. And uh, S13 and S23 is equal to zero. That is because uh, the port one and two are matched. So um, in this experiment, we are just getting all the equations. Uh, there, there are there is no uh, practical uh, calculation given here. Okay. And uh, lossy network, they have not yet uh, implemented in the experiment. Okay, fine. Next. Yeah, in the first uh, explanation, what you have given regarding first uh, uh, experiment. Uh, you have measured the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, right? Uh, yes, sir. Characteristic uh, impedance we, we'll set, uh, we are setting in the experiment only, sir, as 50 ohms or, or yeah. anything yeah. you can. Okay. But uh, uh, do you know what is the characteristic impedance of uh, air free space? Mm. No, sir. Okay, fine. Now in the report, what you can include is uh, you you can you, anyhow you are going to uh, mention all the things so principle of operation or the explanation with the results and simulation part as well. But in the reference, what you need to put is uh, what is the that is the software what you have used or the simulator what you have used for demo purpose. Sir, so that is uh, from the Kanpur IIT virtual lab. That, yeah, that you for, for in the reference you just add the link of that uh, yes, simulator okay. what you have used in the in this one. Okay. Okay. Yes. Link. Hmm. Yeah. Fine. Next. Oh, Visible, sir. Yeah. Okay. So 